Hey guys, welcome to Total Tailgating at NA. Today is the traditional beer and brats. And because we're going live, we have already started poaching our brats. I know those of you who are brat experts love to poach your brats in a little bit of poaching liquid. We've got some beer in there with our sauerkraut, which is very traditional. And what this is gonna do is just make sure these brats are cooked all the way through before we put them on the grill. You can do this the day before. You don't have to do this the day of, but you can do that as well. And so what we're gonna do with that, I'm gonna put this back in my pocket. One of the things I wanted to mention that I do with my brats, everybody's got their recipe for poaching liquid. You know, obviously it usually starts with some beer. Usually it's got the crowd in there. A lot of times there's onions, garlic. I've seen diced tomatoes put in there, which is all delicious. But I just wanna fill you in on what I do. A couple of things I do, one is, I will throw a little whole nutmeg, fresh ground, right in my poaching liquid. So I just give that a little bit of a scratch. We throw a little bit of that in there. That's gonna add a lot of that sort of sweet, savory flavor. If you have, you know, you, maybe you've got a kit like mine. I've got a few things laying around just to do a garam masala mix if I want to. I've got some cinnamon in there as well. I will do the same thing with this with brats. And if you haven't tried it before, you may wanna give this a shot because it's really quite flavorful tasty and I think it adds a lot to the final product uh, it's but it's subtle because you're just putting it in the poaching liquid now the cinnamon is quite strong so I use a bit less of that put that in there as well and you might see floating in our particular poaching liquid um, this red pepper I just take when I find that the grocery store uh, is clearance has peppers on clearance I just hang them in a cabinet I take a needle and thread, run the needle and thread thread through the ends of the peppers, hang them up there, and they make a great little addition to soups, stews, your curries. And of course, our poaching liquid is gonna be fantastic with that pepper in there. A little bit of heat is always nice to add. So now these are fully cooked, and all we really need to do now with our grill, and again, if you poach these be the day before, you have very little left to do. I'm gonna turn these over once. And of course, we did put that, uh, the nutmeg and cinnamon in there earlier as well. I'm gonna roll those over one time. And uh, these are ready to go on the grill. So these are fully cooked. If you did these, if you poached them the day before, you really don't have much to do on game day, which is always nice. And of course, this is finger food too, which is helpful as well. So I've got my grill nice and hot. I'm gonna open the door. We're gonna grill these with the open with an open lid. Um, one of the reasons for that is I want the temperature to be just a shade lower than I would like sear a steak or something like that. I'm trying to preserve the skins on these bratwurst, which is super important. And that's one of the reasons you'll see me using tongs instead of any kind of fork or anything that might puncture these brats. And uh, so we're ready to take those and put them on the, on the grill. I'm getting hungry. Uh, one of the things I am going to do is try to dry these off. I can see this one already has a little bit of a split in it, but that's okay. I'm going to try to dry these off a little bit just with a clean paper towel. And I'm getting a little sizzle. It's not the usual sizzle that you'd get off a steak or something like that. But that's going to build up as the juices sort of flow down into my baffles there. Just try to pat them dry with a clean paper towel. You want it to be as dry as possible. Set them on the grill like that. Now we're getting some sizzle. a little bit of the sauerkraut on there on the grill actually isn't a bad thing at all as far as I'm concerned. It gets a little bit charred, which I try to stay away from, but it works for me. All right, now we can shut off our poaching liquid because we are basically done with that, except if somebody wants to add some of that back to their bratwurst in the bun at the end, which is absolutely fantastic because all that flavor is in that poaching liquid. It should not be wasted. But we've got all our brats over here on the grill and hopefully all we've got to do is just crisp those up for a little bit. And again, if you have a little kit with some uh, nutmeg, cinnamon, maybe your brat poaching, things that you like to do, the hot peppers, etc., it's a great thing to keep handy in the uh, kitchen. Now we should see very quickly, we're already seeing it, look at that, some grill marks on there. So what I'm gonna do is actually just rotate those over and we're gonna get a crisscross grill marks on those because my grates are straight grates and I like to have that crisscross. 
And basically all we have to wait for now with these brats is to make sure that they're browned up, the skin is crisp, and it's exactly the way we want them because they're fully cooked all the way through, which helps the time factor immensely. Um, so while we're doing that, maybe we should talk about some of the things we might want to add to our brats. Of course, you can add all my, there are rules for brats, especially if you're from Chicago or Wisconsin. And one of them is there is a ban on ketchup for brats, as far as everything I've heard. Uh, however, I tend to break the rules once in a while. So as far as I'm concerned, put what you want and what tastes good on your brat. If you like it, you're making the food for yourself and your family and your friends. And if they like it, as far as I'm concerned, it's good for me. We're getting a tiny bit of flame up, but these are already ready to turn. They're getting a little bit crispy. I'm gonna keep them moving just a little bit because we don't want those flare-ups to char the skin too much, but we do wanna crisp them up just a little bit. So you can see that's getting a little bit brown um, and nice, which is exactly what you're shooting for. So, all right. So what I have here, and some of this again, because I tend to break the rules, I don't have ketchup, so I'm okay there, but um, I've got your sort of traditional, just a little uh, brown mustard, a little spicy mustard. But one of the things I really love, this is my one of my favorite things to put on my bratwurst, and I will actually, heaven forbid, replace my sauerkraut with this, and this is just some horseradish sauce. This is actually a sauce, so it's got some other ingredients. I prefer, if you can find it in your local supermarket, you can find just grated up horseradish with a little vinegar in it for, pres for a preservative, and I think it's fantastic on brats. It's really spicy, and if you like horseradish, I think it's a great place to put it. Well, these are ready for one more turn, I think. Let's check them out and just see what we're getting. We're getting a little bit of color. I'd like a little bit more than that, but that's okay. You cook them until they please you, as far as I'm concerned. And these are smelling really good. That's not smelling too bad, is it? You can smell no, that? that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and uh, while we're doing that, we'll get our plates ready. And we've got basically, this is a pretty simple layout. Like this would be an easy tailgating recipe because instead of making fries or worrying about fries, we just grabbed a bag of chips. We got pickles. We got some carrot shreds just for garnish, but we've got some extra sticks if you want to snack on that, which is really a good thing because it kind of cuts the fattiness of the brats. And of course, we've got some extra pickles on the side along with our sauerkraut that we're going to want to throw on there. I think my first one is probably going to be just your sauerkraut and mustard. And then after that, I'm probably going to go for the horseradish. Um, one of the things I really love about those peppers is they, they'll last like almost forever when you dry them out. These that I'm using have been up there, yeah, they, they last literally forever. And the thing is, it's surprising, it really can be surprising how much heat they'll bring. Uh, if you take one of those and break it in half and put it with the seeds in your dish or just put the seeds in your dish, it's going to bring a lot of heat. Uh, on the other hand, if you take a half of one and you take the seeds out of it, you'll bring just a lot of, a little warmth. Uh, to say a curry or anything like that. So these are useful in so many things. How about blackened fish? Throw it in, in your mortar and pestle with some pepper and put it on your blackened fish. That would be delicious as well. These, uh, if I had my druthers, I had this grill turned down a little bit. If I had my druthers, these would be a little bit crispier, but they are nice, at least on that one side. Um, and again, I'm turning them probably more than you need to. If you really have a good sense you can just turn, you, I just rotate them the one time and then flip them over the one time, rotate them again, and by then they're really done. Now at this point, you know, these are plenty good for us. Uh, they're gonna be delicious. I'm gonna add a little bit of that sauerkraut now that I think about it. And of course, if I needed to, I could throw these on the warmer and they're gonna stay for a long time. Turn the, turn the grill down to low, throw them on the warmer and you're good to go for a while. So. This is our version of beer and brats, guys. So we're probably gonna crack open one, put our food together. Actually, let's just assemble it right now. That's probably a good idea because we don't wanna show you this. And see, we're getting that nice flame up a little bit right now, and the color is getting on there. That's what we're looking for, okay? So simple assembly, of course. Just brought in. Uh, I'm going to go with the mustard for right now. A little bit of mustard. I got a little bit of the horseradish too because I just love it so much. And then we can go back. I'm going to grab for my 
sauerkraut I'm gonna grab a little bit out of our poaching liquid because I just think that's loaded with so much more flavor uh, I do like the crisper sauerkraut as well but this stuff has just been soaking up and absorbing all of that beautiful flavor I just can't can't keep away from it so I'm gonna do a little bit of that on there in fact I'm gonna do a lot of that on there I think and you know with a couple of these you've got yourself a pretty darn good meal this is a tailgating favorite a tailgating classic it's hard to beat to be quite honest because you can really you can it's a handheld dish um, and frankly it's loaded with a ton of flavor there's a reason that these things have lasted as long as they have this is our beer and brat I hope you enjoyed it guys this is total tailgating live never done this before this is the first time if you want jump on our Facebook fan page facebook.com slash NFL tailgate party and you can check out this video recipes we've got big burger Friday right isn't it big burger oh, yeah, Friday Big burger Friday we'll do big burger Friday we're gonna have tons of recipes for you and also if you have some ideas for a recipe that you would like to see on the show let us know what that is you can do that in the Facebook on the Facebook page through Facebook um, and if we uh, pick your recipe we'll go ahead and grill it up right here on the show well, I hope you've enjoyed this, and we will be back next time. I'm not sure what we're making just yet, but we'll come up with something delicious. For right now, I need to enjoy these brats. You guys have a great day. Great Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Goodbye.